Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim. In this episode I want to concentrate on fitting the LED lighting for the MIP and the glare shield assembly, get the glare shield assembly built back up and perhaps work on some of the back lighting. In front of me here I've got two different kinds of LED strip, 12 volt cold light and I'm going to wire them up to this dimmer and see which one responds better to the dimmer. Some have a really bad habit of a bad flicker that's visible to the eye and some are quite good. So I'm going to choose the best option out of the two. So now you can see the difference between the two. One is warm white and one is cool light. And I want this for the MIP. If this was for backlighting, I'd use the warm white. Because I want it to look normal underneath the MIP, I want the cool light. And both of them actually dim really well, even though they're not supposed to be dimmable. And there we go. So, warm white it is, let's head inside and fit it. For the MIP, we're gonna use this old SIM1 lighting strip. And all it is is aluminium section with a diffuser cover, and it just simply slots together with the LED strip inside, and it makes for a much better finish. Here we have the upper glare shield centerpiece and as you can see I've routed out a section all the way along and a section back. Now this section back allows the wires to go in over the, the MCP and hides them into the back of the unit and this forward routed section allows the LED strip to be hidden with the cover to go on top which we're going to hot glue in and that way it looks a nice clean finish and you don't see the LEDs shining into the pilot's face from the side. So hopefully with everything connected and I turn up MIP backlighting and you can see it light up. Turn that one off and then we've got MCP or AFDS lighting and it all seems to be working fine. I think that's going to make it look pretty cool. Here we have the MIP backboard. This is the part that sits on the back of the MIP. We're going to attach some 12 volt strip light into the back in the various places and uh, this LED lighting will shine through the panels and make the panels glow in the dark. It's called light flow panels, it's a different way of doing it to how the Boeing do it but it's actually very effective. Here we have the first MIP backboard panel, you can see the LEDs fitted to it. Now it's just a case of getting it to fit back in position. That's the backboard loosely in position. What I'm going to do now is apply power via this socket here and then test how effective it is at the front. So you probably can't see me right now, it looks pretty dark on camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn up the MIP background lighting and see how that looks. With the MIP lighting complete, let's work on the two overhead panels. I'll lower them down, you'll see the guts inside and I'll go and get the backing plates that need to go on, mark out where the lights need to go and then we'll wire them up. Simple then. I've just mounted the overhead backboard 
it's in there temporarily I've tidied up the USB hub at the top here now I need to run 12 volt power line from the front the power section in the corner down there all the way up now there was 22 gauge wire which just isn't powerful enough for this this is pulling three and a half amps so we need to go up a couple of gauges to 16 gauge I went 16 gauge up the front and then put a terminal block in here and feed the three connection points here and also run it up along the top and put 12 volts into the aft overhead so I've been out in the workshop and created a little power connector now this power connector is designed so that this whole section can be disassembled and removed just by disconnecting this and the five USB connectors this will provide power for the 12 volts to run the backlighting, the 5 volts to run the servos and then it will have an output from the board here to the aft overhead to adjust the 12 volts out for the LED lighting in the aft overhead. And it's just a prototyping board with a quick release connector on which separates in the middle like so. Plugs back in and we turn it over we can see I've soldered in one connector and I've put a brake line in so where I put the screws through they're not going to short out and then we'll attach the wires next to the connector next up is to install the overhead dimmer unit and we're going to use one of these 12 volt 8 amp cheap LED units I'm going to mount it on the back face here and it's run the wires straight to it. So what we've done is we've taken the dimmer unit apart, we've taken the pot out and the pot is attached to the front side of this panel which means we can dim it from the correct side and then we've run those wires that go to the circuit board inside all the way through the panel up to this connector. On the modded case now, I've added another four pin connector. All that does is allows us then again to be able to connect, disconnect the forward overhead completely from the aircraft shell if I ever need to. There we have no lights, turning it up. Everything lights up all bar the lower buzz panel and I wonder what's gone wrong with that. Now we know the panel works, what we'll do is we'll pull the panel back down and I'll give you a quick overview of how I've wired it up. To pull my panels down, both the forward and aft overhead are on hinges. Now they're, I think they're reversed hinged to the real aircraft so they slide down this way and out this way. That's just e for ease of maintenance. Let me give you a quick overview of how I've wired this panel up. At the top here, at the upper connector, we've got the power coming in and we've got four lines coming in and one USB. We currently have the five volts to the USB hub here and that's going to go in a minute because that will go down to the five volts on this connector which gets rid of two wires going down the front of the console. So coming up from the power station at the bottom of the MIP we'll have five and twelve volts. The 12 volts then comes across to the dimmer unit here. At the top of the dimmer unit we've replaced the potentiometer with some cables that run along and go into the potentiometer at the front of the panel. That allows us to dim the panel remotely. On the output of the dimmer unit we've got 12 volts via these two cables here and they're going to run off to the aft overhead up here which will allow dimming of the aft overhead at the same time 
and then we've got two more cables that hide in behind all this wiring loom and they run off to the three connectors on the forward overhead and that allows us to supply power to all the backlighting in the overhead. This system currently here is pulling three amps. So I think my next job is to wire the aft overhead and for me to be able to do that I need to continue running these 12 volt lines up into the aft part. Also while I'm there I might also run the 5 volt power lines up into the aft overhead as well as cutting the power lines to the USB hub and then hook them up into the 5 volt section here as well. As you can see I pulled the, the aft overhead down and I've forgotten that I'd already wired up the aft panel with regards to the 12 volt backlighting. It has come away because the sticky tape really doesn't stay on that long so we'll use hot glue to finish it off and we're going to put a quick release connector at the top here. Well, you probably can tell from the light bloom from here that we've got power applied. I've obviously forgotten to uh, correct the potentiometer. The potentiometer is wired backwards, so on is off, and off is on. Not very good. I'll correct that in a second. Put the panel on here to hide that bloom. Turn the lights off and see what we get. So here we go, let's put power on. I bring up the lights. And you can tell by the smile on my face that that is working quite well. The first thing I want to show you is yes, it's exceptionally dark in the cockpit right now. I've put the rear bulkhead back on and I've now wired the dome lights up correctly. So they come from the aft overhead. And if I go to dim, you should see me a little bit clearer. And you can see there's actually two of them here. And of course, they go to bright, which should really make me stand out. Now the cockpit is starting to look really amazing. I've never been in a 737 cockpit, but I imagine this is what it looks like. And of course, there are two dome lights in the cockpit. And if I move my hand, there it is. One left and right. I'm hoping the camera's not gonna auto focus too much. And I'm gonna try and go really bright, which makes it really easy to see in the cockpit. So let's show you what the, the overhead backlighting looks like. So I've also managed to wire up the map lights now correctly. So from the panel down here, you can see that we can dim and brighten it. And that's the same for the chart panels in the sidewalls, which I'll show you also. Forward here is the map panel and down here is the chart light. And I think we're going to call this episode done here, guys. It's been an absolute blast. The cockpit is, is looking better than it's ever looked before. Everything is pretty much working now. Still got the centre pedestal to build. I'll leave you with these closing shots. And for the time being, sim out.